But he, he plays big minutes. He had a great stretch of the season where he was 20 plus for several games in a row. Bobcats digging in. It's Cole forcing the steal. He got a little numbers for Ryan Hamlin for the steal. Pettis for Alexander along the baseline. Finds Cole up and in. Bobcats up 2 0. Tyler Michael wants a deep three. Long rebound, cost in the board. Pettis lines it up this time. Yes! Ball's reversed all the way into the left corner. It's Reich putting it up for three. Daniel Alexander a rebound. Alexander ahead. Edwin's Here we time. go. Hello, Edwin Cole. And what you think is a good closeout against a normal player is not a good closeout against Maskamuffo. He is a shooter. Cole underneath. Nice dish from Pettis. Really into the game. Very engaged. Wagner the layup. Bobcats have numbers. A lob for Cole. Oh! Edwin Cole, are you kidding me? That's a great pass by Lawrence Pettis. He put it almost in the hoop, but not quite, and let Edwin Cole go finish that. Big momentum play for Frostburg. Bobcats looking for a stop, trying to build on it. High post, it's Myers. There they a go. turnover. Live ball turnover. Tyler Michael on the move. He's got a trailing Pettis, a trailing Campbell. Lines it up, booyah! Darren Campbell. It's a chance for Lawrence Pettis to get a rest as well as Lighty's checked defensively by Noah Ellen. Inside for Cole. Double digits already for Edwin Cole. Nice, nice play by Desmond Lighty. Oh, nice backdoor pass. It's Lighty for two. Have to get things under control. Need a live ball stop, live ball turnover, live ball rebound here. Beatty. There we go. There's your turnover. McMorris. 1-3-1 one, one, one zone, it looks like. As soon as you get that ball near the three-point line, it turns into a 2-3. Campbell wants it from deep. Yes! Darren Campbell, a pair of threes. I think in order to, to play big guy at York College, you got to be a 30% is the rare case where he shoots better from three than he does from two, or like from overall. So Great defensive play. Three-pointer. Oh, that would have been killer. Michael, big rebound. Bobcats needed it. Tyler Michael said, enough of this. Enough of Someone's that. Someone's going to grab a rebound. Pettis, acrobatic. <laughs> Basket interference. No, he just puts it in. Are you and kidding me? And you see it. Every time a big guy touches the ball for York, someone backdoor cuts. I'm not sure in the system if it's supposed to be a certain position or just guys backdoor cut when they think they can, but Good they do it all the Johnson. time. Yeah. And they've hit they've hit the backdoor cuts a couple times for, for big buckets. Campbell for Pettis, wants it from deep. Yes, sir! Bobcats lead. So we'll see what he has to offer underneath for Cole. Extra pass for Pettis in rhythm. Yes! Up, play. Like, they, they, like there was earlier, both big guys are out. This is a chance for, for them to take control of this game. Cole, a block on the reverse layup. Backdoor cut, extra pass out for Beatty. He's wide open. Misses the three, big break for the Bobcats. Cost in the head for Pettis, a chance to take the lead now with under five minutes to go. It's Daniel Alexander underneath. Alexander the finish. The freshman chasing Lawrence Pettis, it's a home run ball for Tyler Michael. He's one on one. Michael spinning, finishing, oh! I thought he lost that ball. And it's rebounded by Polzinski. Wagner wants to run. Now my question is that ball hit the bottom of the hoop. Yeah. Why wasn't that out of bounds? And Cole with another block, sending away Myers, and then he collects it as well. Pettis leaves for Daniel Alexander. Back for Pettis. Back for three. Give me that. He, Lawrence Pettis. Lawrence. All right, Pettis into the paint, to the rim. Yes! 18 and a half. The better team in the second half is going to win this game as Michael inside. Costin! Yes! Alexander for Pettis in the corner. A couple of defenders on him. He splits through the double, gives to Alexander. Alexander in the corner for three. We've seen all year how great Daniel Alexander is. And I said at halftime, I said, Jason Beatty's like Daniel Alexander. Pettis uses the high screen, stops and pops, and hits. Lawrence Pettis has 20. Beatty makes a strong move, gets his own rebound, puts it up. Costin helps out, and it ends up in the hands of Wagner. Blocked by Daniel Alexander. Out for Campbell, extra pass, Pettis. He's been hot today from three. Wow. It continues. 
Pettis drives in. Contact and one. You got to get ball movement against the zone. Alexander's on the baseline. He likes that shot. Swish. Five to shoot now. Alexander works the baseline. Has Campbell. He's got to put it up. This is a long two. Swish. Rattles around and in, as a matter of fact. Guarding Beatty as the one who's going to go double, because you're not scared of his three-point shot. Johnson misses, out for Campbell. See, like, like I said, Darren Campbell doesn't want to catch and shoot that. Alexander Kennedy will. Bobcats up nine. Campbell catches and hits. Darren Campbell, yes, sir. Wagner denying Jordan Johnson. Campbell wants another one. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Dilly dilly. This is a York team that has five players average double digit points. Dalton Goss, he gets in on the action. Give me that. They want the home run ball. Got it's it. It's Michael. And one. And he lays it up and in. He just had five against the Eagles in the loss on Saturday. And uh, there you go. Yeah. 0 for 2. There we go. Ooh, Campbell. Tough pass, and it ends they up in the hands down. of Johnson. Maybe oh, not. my goodness. Wow. Tyler Michael. Final five minutes, Frostburg up by 13. Campbell catching, firing, hitting again. Every single time. Leads to a layup for Scamuffo. But the pass is ahead for Goss. And Goss! And the foul! What? And bringing it across, Nolan Smith. Jordan Johnson takes it away. And the Bobcats knock off number seven, York College, 95-85. You take down the number seven team in the country, York Spartans. Where does this stack up in terms of your all-time victories since you've been here at Frostburg State? It's a pretty good one. I Here, it's probably the best one we've had here. Is, I didn't realize they were number seven. I knew they were in the top 10. We beat Randolph-Macon when they were number one down at their place about three or four years ago on a Sunday afternoon. That was pretty good, but it wasn't here. So it's a real good win for us. I mean, I thought our kids were pretty gritty. Uh, I wish we'd have made a few more free throws down the stretch. But uh, we doubled their low post. They're very, 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 very tough inside, and we got a lot out of that defensively. So uh, it worked for us tonight. Speaking of that defense, Blade Reich and Dalton Myers for them have averaged over 36 points combined a game. You'll hold them tonight to a combined 25 points. How did you get it done on the defensive end, especially without Edwin Campbell fouling out with almost 10 minutes left? Yeah, well, you know, when we play our 52 defense, for years we had doubled the low post. In the last two years we haven't done it as much, and we worked on it a lot in practice Monday and Tuesday, and we said we were going to do it. We started in zone on uh, makes and man on misses, and then we played almost all man, I think, the second half. And we were able to double them some. Wright Scott picked up two fouls in the first half. He only played about four or five minutes. That's obviously helped us a little bit, too. Lawrence Pettis Jr., 29 points tonight. Darren Campbell, 23 points tonight. The depth in this team is unreal, but let, let's talk about Lawrence for a second. He's been on absolute fire as of late averaging almost 20 points a game in his last three games. What have you seen in practice and in the games from him that's turned him into such a good all-around player? Well, if you go back two weeks ago at Wesley on a Saturday afternoon, he shot the ball horribly. And uh, I told him, I said, shooting slumps end as quickly as they begin. And we've come in the last two weeks from 11 to 12 every day and gotten up extra shots for an hour, our whole team. And our whole team is shooting better since we've done that. We're not going to be able to continue to do it once classes start next week. So I think that's a big thing right there. And, you know, he's playing with a lot of confidence. He's playing very well right now. You head down to St. Mary's over the weekend, a team that got the better of you here at Bobcat Arena. What do you have to change going into that game to come away with the victory? We just got to play well. I mean, you know, we had a nice league at, at halftime. And to their credit, they ground, grounded out and grounded out and wound up beating us, I believe, by three. Uh, so we've got to play well. It's always hard to win on the road. People have no idea how hard road wins are. <coughs> but our guys will obviously be motivated because that game at home in December was a game that we, we felt like we let get away. Well, Coach, best of luck to you. Come Saturday night, and we'll see you back here in about two weeks. Thank you.